Welcome everyone and thanks for joining Double Radius as we host staff for today's webinar on Integra multi-gigabit license backhaul. Our two speakers for today from SAF are Jeff Wade, who is the sales manager for ISPs, and Tatiana Dunce, who is the technical services director. Before I turn it over to Jeff to get us started, I'll mention a couple important items. Throughout the webinar, if you have any questions on the, on the material, please enter them into the questions box so we can address them during the Q&A at the end. And following the Q&A, please just take a minute to complete the survey that will appear on your screen as we really appreciate getting your feedback. And with that, let's jump right in. I'll hand it over now to Jeff. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Jeff Wade. I'm the ISP sales manager here for SAF North America. Um, I work closely with all of our WISC customers uh, here in the US and Canada. And uh, also be working with me today will be Tatiana. Um, Tatiana is our technical service director here at North America and she covers all of our you know, tier one technical support and manages our tech support team. Next slide, please. Um, the contents of today's presentation, uh, we'll be discussing the Integra X and the Integra E. Uh, our Integra E is our E-band 80 gigahertz platform uh, radio, and then we also have our Integra X, which is a dual core XPIC radio. So we'll start off with an introduction to our whole radio portfolio. We'll move into Integra E and X highlights and distances. We'll go into the key features and do an overview of Integra X and overview of Integra E. Um, we'll show you know bench testing and installation guidelines. We'll jump into the web GUI for a quick overview. And then we'll go into you know how SAF and Double Radius work together. And then we'll follow up with question and answers here at the end. slide. So just a little bit about SAF. Um, you know, we're one of the world's top microwave data transmission equipment manufacturers. We've uh, delivered radios to more than 130 countries worldwide. Uh, we're manufacturing in Europe, uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Latvia. We have uh, more than 20 years of experience in, in this market and have uh, a strong R&D and in-house manufacturing, ability to highly customize solutions based on customers' needs. SAF North America Technical Branch is based out of Denver, Colorado, where we also have our warehouse and uh, our sales team as well. Local customer support and technical support for customers in the US and Canada is also based out of Denver. To give you a quick overview, um, the products that we have today are listed here on the left, our Integra E, which is E-band. Our Integra X is uh, the dual core radio. Our Integra G and Integra W, both are single core radios. Our Phoenix G2 is a split mount solution. And then our Marathon is uh, a point-to-point -point radio lower capacities for you know SCADA networks. So uh, you can see the frequencies they cover highlighted in the bottom and then the types of throughput you get on the far right. We also have a Spectrum Compact, which is a handheld spectrum analyzer listed here at the bottom. And that being said, I'll pass it over to Tatiana, who's gonna start off with uh, some of the more technical information. Hi, everybody. So we'll just jump into the highlights of both of these products and what, what's common between both of those. So first of all, it's a full outdoor unit and it looks like exactly as it's shown on the picture on the right. Uh, and it has a direct mount to uh, the dishes that are adapted to this product and that we provide with it. Um, the capacity for Integra X ranges up to 2.2 gigabits per second. And for uh, Integra E product that goes up to 10 gigabits per second. That's a full duplex speed that we list here. Uh, Integra X is a dual core radio in a single enclosure and it also has a built-in OMT. Uh, at the same time, Integra E features not just ACM, but so-called ACMB feature, which also decrease, decreases the bandwidth when uh, the environment is becoming worse. Uh, both of these radios are quite powerful. For Integra E, we have uh, power up to plus 16 dBm, and for Integra X, the maximum power is 31 dBm. In both of these uh, products, we have uh, 
high grade, high class, 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet switch built in that has loads of advanced features. And both of these uh, products support dual power for redundancy. So you can uh, apply two sources of the power and use them as redundant power sources. Uh, so now if we look at the interfaces, starting from the left side in the picture here, so we have two SFP plus ports. And uh, here you can place pretty much any kind of SFP modules. It can be one gigabit, 2.5 gigabit, or 10 gigabit per second module. The uh, next port, the third port here is the electrical RJ45. And uh, that one can be used to apply the power over PoE. And you can also transmit up to one gigabit per second of throughput over there. The next port is uh, the service port. And in there we have LED. Uh, USB B port and 3.5 millimeter jack. So LED is being used to first of all indicate if the unit is powered up or not, and also during the alignment, more frequent blinking indicates a stronger signal. USB B port is used as your serial, and 3.5 millimeter jack can be used to attach uh, the voltmeter to it and do the alignment of the antenna. And then the last port on the right here is the two pin DC port. So that's your second power source that you can attach. So it could be a direct uh, DC power attached to this port. Uh, the features are pretty common for both products. So both of them support VLANs. By default, there is an in-band management and it's possible to configure out-band management uh, using the VLANs. SNMP supported and uh, management access wise uh, features like SSH, HTTP, serial interface and radius is also supported. Uh, we also have network time protocol supported by these products. And uh, later when we look at the WebGU interface, you'll see that there is a lot of counters accessible, alarms, graphs and spectrum analyzer built into WebGUI. And since this is, uh, the latest platform SAF works with, uh, we're also planning on adding uh, more and more features to this list in the future. So the dual power capabilities, uh, when applying the power to these units, you have choices. So number one is you can use PoE injector and uh, apply the power through the Ethernet cable and at the same time you can uh, use the port on PoE injector to transmit the data up to one gigabit per second. In the option number two uh, we're applying um, the power directly to the DC port and we're using the fiber optical cable for your data transmission. Most likely with these products, since they're capable of doing more than just one gigabit, you're going to end up uh, using these fiber optical interfaces because that one supports up to 10 gigabits per second speed. And the option number three combines uh, both of those. So we can uh, apply the power through the PoE injector and also direct DC. they use the fiber optical for data transmission. So these power sources uh, become redundant. If something happens to one of your power sources, the this, this second one is still going to you know. Power consumption wise, Integra E is uh, on the low side. It's about 50 watts. But when we talk about Integra X, it's pretty much double that. And the reason for that is because we have uh, basically two radios inside of this enclosure. So in this table here, you can uh, that, for example, for 6 gigahertz uh, radio, it's going to be 100 watts, a little bit less for 11 gigahertz and 18 gigahertz. Uh, this is a picture of PO injector that SAF supplies specifically with Integra X. So we have designed this injector specifically for this power uh, product. It's a high, product, uh, high power PO injector and supports 120 watts uh, power. So that's sufficient for this product to power the dual core, both radios at the same time. Uh, the input voltage for this injector is 20 up to 65 uh, volts. And at the output, it's being stabilized to 56. So
number we have here. Uh, this one also has an input DC starting from 20 up to 65 uh, volts, and it also stabilizes the output voltage to 54. Supports the same kind of standards. It does auto PoE++, and there are, you know, switchable current limits uh, that can be changed using the dip switch in the back of the unit. And this one also includes the surge protection on all the lines. So antennas wise, that, that's something we also provide with our products. For Integra E, uh, currently we have one foot and two feet dishes and they're both uh, adapted directly to Integra E product. Uh, these antennas, because it's an E-band, have pretty narrow beam width. So as it says here, it's 0.5 degrees for a two-foot dish and 0.8 for one-foot dish. Uh, Integra X-wise, there's a little bit larger range for the antennas available, starting from one foot up to six foot dishes, depending on the frequency range. And all of those are also directly adapted to the antenna. And the good thing about Integra X is that you can use the single pole antennas because as we already mentioned, the actual OMT for XP Corporation is uh, built inside the radio. So now you're probably thinking, what are the distances that we can achieve using these products? So we worked hard and we prepared these charts to show you approximately what can be achieved in different climates and using different sizes of the dishes. So this one specific uh, explains that we can achieve in dry climate uh, in favorable conditions using one foot dish at the full capacity of 10 gigabits per second, somewhere with the medium availability, somewhere about two miles. Now, if we look at the lower throughput, like one gigabit per second, of course that distance can be increased uh, close to five miles. Uh, if we increase the antenna size to two foot dishes, we can increase the distances even more. So that will be uh, close to three miles uh, with the 10 gigabits per second and close to seven miles using uh, one gigabit per second throughput. Now the next example here shows uh, the moderate climate, so a little bit more of rain. And as you might know, E-band is affected by the rain, the amount of rain quite considerably. And because of that, these distances are basically decreasing from the previous slides. So now with one foot dish and full throughput of 10 gig, we're limited to 1.7 miles. And with the two foot dish, that can be like 2.6 miles with 10 gigabits per second. Uh, if we keep decreasing the amount of rain and in the rainy climate, like think Florida, for example, uh, the distances are becoming even smaller. So that would be with one foot dish and 10 gigabits capacity about just one mile. And with the two foot dish, somewhere around 1.6 miles. Uh, this slide I have distances wise for Integra X and it specifically shows an example for 11 gigahertz and the channel width of 80 uh, megahertz. And here we can see that the full throughput, which is in this channel size, is about 1.5 uh, gigabits per second. And uh, with some medium availability using free fit antennas on both sides of a link, we could be somewhere around 17, 19 miles. So that's with the full throughput. But now if you uh, imagine that you're using ACM and the modulation is being downshifted, then you get down to 4QM where you just only really need to push 200 megs out of the product, you can go as high as 60s or 70s uh, in the distance with free fit dishes. That's pretty impressive uh, distance. So the key features of Integra X, so as we already mentioned, that's a dual core radio product. Uh, nevertheless, we can actually use it also in a single channel. So that's all configurable inside the radio. So this our first example here shows that in case we configure just one channel, actually only one modem radio and one radio module is going to be used to transmit the signal. And uh, if we configure the radio for sing uh, single channel operation with the XPIC, so XPIC means that we're actually utilizing two channels, just in different, it's the same channel, but they're in different polarizations. So in that case, we're occupying um, 
both modems, modem A, modem B, and both radio modules, uh, radio module A and radio module B. That gets combined into OMT inside the radio, and then it, it is connected to the antenna and goes uh, through the air. Both of the polarizations are being transmitted. So uh, the maximum capacity of Integra X is 2.2 gigabits per second. That is if we utilize two 112 megahertz channels, uh, full duplex, two plus so XPIC channels. But unfortunately, United States uh, 112 megahertz channel is not available. So we're forced to use 80 megahertz channels, like in 11 gigahertz, for example. And that gives us a possibility of achieving a maximum 1.54 gigabits per second. The frequency bands that are supported by this product currently are 6, 11, and 18 gigahertz. Those are pretty much the most popular ranges in US. Uh, the channel sizes, if needed, can be configured to something smaller, starting from 5 up to 112 megahertz. And the modulations supported go up to 4096 QM. And there is also heatless ACM supported by this product. The transmit power is about 31 dBm at 4 QM or 26 dBm at 4096 QM. Receive level sensitivity, if we think about 80 megahertz channel for 4096 QM, uh, it is NEG 51.5 or NEG 83 dBm at 4 QM, the lowest modulation. So the large benefit of this product, if we compare it to the previous products that SAP has been uh, releasing, like if we compare it to Integra G or Integra W, it has uh, really high power radio modules. Uh, so that, that's about 6 dB increase if we compare it to our previous products. And with this increase, what it basically means, it saves us uh, some money on the antenna size when we install the links. In addition to that, uh, the linearity at such high transmit power is being improved by using this ADPD, Adaptive Digital Predistortion Algorithm. Uh, right now, this product supports fixed power, but uh, the variable power is also in the roadmap. When I say variable power, I mean that by shifting the modulations down, the power is also going to be increasing. And the feature, which is uh, automatic transmit power control, is still under development, but it's coming soon for this product as well. Integra E and some key features for this product. So you might probably know already that uh, Integra E operates in really high frequency range, which is called E band. That's the range from 71 up to 76 gigahertz and 81 up to 86 gigahertz. And uh, this particular product is FDD and it supports uh, 10 gigahertz the duplex spacing and the maximum bandwidth of two gigahertz, really, really wide bandwidth compared to the other license ranges. Uh, the modulation goes up to 256 QM and the channel width supported are starting from 62.5 up to 2000 megahertz or two gigahertz. Uh, so uh, the full capacity of 10 gigs is available at two gigahertz with the maximum modulation of uh, 128 QM. Uh, from SAF, it is possible to purchase two license options, 5 gigabits per second and 10 gigabits per second. From the FCC standpoint, uh, there is really no licensing. However, it is required to register the product and there is some paperwork involved, but the process is much simpler than the regular license bands that we're used to working with. The other feature I started talking about a little bit uh, for Integra E is so-called ACMB. So this, the simple ACM, it's adaptive coding modulation. And what it does, it shifts the modulations based on the received uh, signal and the noise quality. Um, so at different thresholds, it increases modulation and then it decreases modulation. What ACMB does is it doesn't stop at the lowest modulation level, like 4QM or BPSK, but it just keeps uh, keeps going lower by decreasing the actual bandwidth. 
So if the bandwidth is, let's say, 2000 uh, megahertz, it's going to decrease it by another step by two and then by four. So it's going to be 1000 and then it's going to be 500 megahertz. So that's, that's some additional feature for Integra E. So now a little bit more of uh, practical things. When you receive the link, how, how do you actually configure it? How do you test it and how do you deploy it? So especially for Integra E, the test kits are extremely expensive in that frequency range. So we're not even thinking about it and not even suggesting to our customers to buy those test kits. We just say, uh, do it simple and be creative. And as we were creative and this picture here on the right, we use the office paper pack to create a padding to create an attenuation. And, and this is a good option and it actually works pretty good. So specifically for Integra E, one office paper pack is pretty much enough for this product and it provides enough of attenuation. But now if we look at Integra X, because this is higher power product and usually those are lower frequency ranges like six or 11 gigahertz, we suggest to use a little bit more of office paper packs like in this example for our office paper packs and setting the transmit power to the minimum of uh, 6 dBm should be sufficient to provide good signal level. Um, so the default IP addresses are the same for Integra X and Integra E. It's as shown here, dot 11 for the low side, uh, I'm sorry, dot 10 for the low side radio and dot 11 for the high side radio. And the credentials are also the same for Integra E and X. It's admin and change me. Uh, Installation wise, uh, in this example, in these pictures, we have 11 gigahertz uh, Integra X SAF2 circular flange shown in the photos. So it is circular because it's an XPIC product and we need to make sure that both of the polarizations, vertical and horizontal, can come out of the radio and go through the dish. So the attachment is uh, pretty simple. There is a hook, as you can see on the second picture here, uh, that goes on top of the adapter. Uh, so the units is basically sitting on that hook. And while it's sitting on that hook, you need to use a long Allen key that's included in the box and basically tighten all of these four clamps, starting with the top ones and then the bottom ones. And no matter what your intended channel polarization is, uh, the handle must always be on the top. And at the end, you're actually supposed to perform a step of uh, making sure that it's aligned correctly by either using the spirit level or just really good eye level. Uh, with uh, the Integra E, just a couple pictures to show you how the interface looks like. It is actually also a circular interface, but it's really small one. It's 3.18 millimeters only. And uh, here it, it's actually polarization dependent. So it transmits only in one channel. And the actual polarization is uh, being determined by the flange position on Integra E. So by default, it's the, you can see the polarization, uh, the arrow is for, facing to the left. That's your you actually are required to remove this whole adapter and rotate it by 90 degrees. And that way you're changing the polarization. Uh, since these are really high capacity products, I'm pretty sure you're going to want to use the fiber optical uh, interface. And these few pictures just show the steps on how to assemble the fiber optic interface. So you start by plugging the SFP module inside the port of uh, Integra. Uh, then uh, we provide, uh, SAF provides uh, the cable gland used for the optical cable strain relief. So you have to pull the optical cable with the DLC connector through uh, this cable gland and then uh, tighten the, the connectors on the top and on the bottom. Uh, that's how you install the fiber optical interface. Now, when you get uh, to the alignment, we always recommend to use the multimeter that's the most efficient uh, method. So for that, uh, you're going to have to use the 3.5 millimeter jack port and the uh, special cable that we also provide from SAF to be able to connect your multimeter. 
And uh, when that is done, you need to actually know what is your expected received level. So let's say if it's like a neg uh, 50, then your expected voltage level on the multimeter is 0.8 uh, volts. So this is just a reference chart for the alignment purpose. Integra X is a little bit more trickier and uh, more interesting alignment wise because it's an XPEC product. And if you're using the XPEC uh, channel, you need to make sure that uh, these channels don't actually interfere with each other. So for that, it is recommended to configure in the web interface uh, the link as a single polarized and use channel A. Then uh, use uh, RSSI channel A for multimeter signal measurements. When that is done and you achieve your expected received level, you can switch the system back to the XPEC mode. Also check if your received signal levels are within the expected 2 dB margin for both polarizations against your calculated received level. And there is another parameter called XPD, cross polarization discrimination, that is displayed on the WebGUI interface. So you need to make sure that that parameter when you're done with the alignment is somewhere between 26 and 40 dB. If it is not, you can loosen uh, one of the uh, radios on one of the side and try to rotate the radio a little bit and you might see some improvement with this XPD parameter. Uh, here, we're just posting all of the videos that we have on Integra E. Those are quite uh, useful. They show in great detail how to perform the bench test, how to perform the configuration in WebGUI. And there is also some outdoors uh, videos on how to actually attach the radio unit to the mast and how to do the alignment. Even though we don't have these specific videos for Integra X, this can be used as a pretty good reference for Integra X uh, installation and alignment as well. There is a lot of things in common there. Uh, WebGUI interface is quite user-friendly and it's uh, easy to use. I was actually going to demonstrate you how it looks like. Here I have it, hope you can see that. Uh, th this is a test link that we have in our headquarters uh, in Riga and uh, the configuration is pretty simple. So this is the status by default. We have the local unit information, the remote unit. So my local is the low side, my remote is the high side. The transmit power is set to pretty low level and uh, these are my frequencies uh, and uh, the received level is pretty strong about NEC 20 dBm. If you need to apply some changes or configure something, you click modify and that opens you up the options to change uh, the transmit power, to change the transmit frequency, to change the bandwidth, to also change the modulation. Um, now configuration wise, if you need to configure uh, more than that, like for example, these are in here. Also, this is just the status. If you need to modify something, then you have to click here. In the system IP configuration, definitely you would have to go here and change it to some other values that differ from the default. And then the performance here, we have alarm, event log, uh, some performance graphs that we can look at. And the performance graphs, you can look at for different parameters. Like we have received level here, uh, colored in red. Then we have MAC, MSC is your noise level on the right side. And you can change the dates and you can zoom into some specific details if you have to by dragging these items. And by dragging the mouse, you can see what, what was the level at specific uh, intervals of the time. I am not going to do a deep dive of the web GUI uh, in this webinar. Uh, we would rather spend more time on the questions at the end of this webinar. At this point, I would like to hand it to Jeff. 
Yeah, thanks, Tanya. So we're going to go a little bit over some of the, you know, sales aspects of the Integra ENX, um, you know, first slide if you want to go into presentation mode. Is how is SAF outperforming our competition? You know, as a company, uh, we believe that we have the best technical support in the industry. Um, we have a volume purchase agreement that we'll get into a little bit later. Uh, we have a commitment to quality. So we test every radio that we ship out the door. Um, it goes through extensive testing in our uh, Latvian labs. We have strategic partners uh, about, um, uh, sorry. Uh, our customer service is, is beyond anybody else's. We focus on our WISP network advancements. We have a responsive sales and technical support team. Um, as far as products go, we have a 10 gigabit sw switch built into both the Integra E and X, which has been a great selling point for us. Um, uh, redundant power supplies is also, you know, having the ability to, if a power supply go down and having that DC power connected to it has been great as well. Um, the built-in OMT with simple design and cost. We have the highest TX power on the market. Uh, 4096 QAM is the highest spectrum efficiency and the lowest dollar per megabit. Next slide. Um, this is a quick summary of what SAF uh, services. Uh, you know, we have uh, our equipment staging and configuration. So we'll actually go in and stage and configure links before we send them out for our customers. Uh, SAF is also going and doing indoor equipment installation for customers, uh, site access, acceptance and commissioning, uh, technical product trainings and demonstrations, uh, technical support and pre-sales support, troubleshooting on-site, RMA services, and quality control, MPS. Next slide. Uh, we offer a volume purchase agreement. Uh, this is an agreement that we come into with our customers in order to you know, be the most competitive on pricing. What we ask from our customers is a commitment over one year's time. Um, quarterly forecast of upcoming projects, um, projected amount of links they plan to purchase over one year, communicate regularly with sales, and uh, we reevaluate these contracts yearly. Um, what you get out of this uh, volume purchase agreement is pricing discount on all your product over one year. Uh, we have the ability to set aside stock in our Denver warehouse and uh, cut down on lead times. Next slide. So double radius, uh, you know, SAF strives to have the right mix of distribution partners. Uh, we look for partners and companies that understand the values and aren't just, you know, words on a website. Our partners have a deep understanding of the markets they serve. They know the, know the challenges our operators are facing on a daily business. SAF, you know, partners and best time and energy into fully training the, the DR staff and on our staff products. And they work closely with the end users to make sure they're offering the, the best long-term solutions. Next slide. And uh, so we also train, you know, their tech support team to support our staff radios with those type of questions. Um, staff visits DR team, you know, once a quarter to provide training product announcements. So they should always be up to date on what the, the latest uh, either software releases or, you know, new products that are coming to the market from SAF. Uh, we have monthly calls with their management to forecast opportunities and plan marketing efforts. Um, you know, by forecasting through DR, we're able to help our customers drastically cut down on lead times. Uh, DR sales team is trained to cover, you know, our current product lines and support our customers. Uh, they have the ability to sell to multiple vendors and provide bundled packages and uh, also provide, you know, point to point coordinations through the FCC. So. So that concludes our uh, 
presentation for today. We'd like to save some time here to, you know, answer any questions. So I'll pass the mic back over to Double Radius and, and see what we have for questions. Yeah, feel free if anyone has any questions to go ahead and answer them into the questions box so we can address them here. As Jeff referenced, we can also answer questions um, at a later date, you know, through your representative that you may already have spoken with. Um, we also have a recording of the webinar so you can review and share. But if uh, if anyone has any questions here that we'd really like to ask, go ahead and enter those here and we'll just give a moment for that. And um, following this uh, Q&A time, there will be a survey that just takes about 30 seconds if you can uh, fill that out when it comes up on your screen. So I think we are good for now. Uh, don't see any questions. Oh, we've got one here. Um, okay, if you could, if you could talk about the, the value proposition um, a little bit more versus competitors is what the question is. Yeah, I think um, you know staff's always made the the commitment to quality is I, I'd say the highest thing and and uh, with a technical background starting from the top down, um, you know we test every radio that comes off off of the shelf. So we don't you know batch test or you know test one of every ten. We we do every single radio and because we stand behind that commitment to call quality, we're able to offer you a five year warranty out of the box. I, I do not know of one other manufacturer in the industry that offers a five-year warranty out of the box. And that just shows, you know, how much we stand behind the product we make. And, and like I said, the reliability, uh, I believe that SAF has the highest reliable, most reliable radios on the market. Anything, Tanya, you can add? I guess another thing would be, you know, everything that we sell is yet full capacity out of the box. So, it's a simple bill of materials. We don't, you know, add any additional line items for capacity upgrades or, you know, uh, any surprise items. Uh, this is simple bill of materials and you get what you pay for and it, it comes at full capacity out of the box. Okay, and there was another specific add on to that question about if the five year warranty includes advanced replacement. It does not, that's, uh, the five-year warranty is, you know, manufacturer defects. So um, we do have an option of a next day replacement, which can be added to it, um, or, you know, the, the ability to, to spare as well, so. Okay. Any other questions that folks have here before we uh, end for the day? We'll give just another few seconds here to see if there's any other questions that people might have. All right, again, you can certainly ask questions um, to Double Radius, uh, to the contacts you have. Um, you can certainly reach out, doubleradius.com as our, our website, of course, and uh, sales at doubleradius.com if you have any general questions, if you don't have a point of contact yet. Otherwise, thank you for joining us here today. Uh, the recording should be available in uh, the next uh, 48 hours. And with that, um, wish you a, a good day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.